Tokyo Electric Power Company executives have bowed to pressure and released some of the most important evidence from the early days of Japan's nuclear disaster. They've unveiled videos that document the efforts to deal with the meltdowns and explosions at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. TEPCO officials show the recordings to the media Monday. Select journalists will now be able to watch 150 hours of edited tape from March 11th to 16th, 2011. It tracks the back and forth conversations between workers at the nuclear plant and personnel at headquarters. TEPCO also released 90 minutes of edited video. The videos show workers struggling to contain the accident after the plant lost all power sources. A series of hydrogen explosions in the early days of the disaster confused them. Company executives were also puzzled about the government's intervention in the crisis. TEPCO officials banned reporters from making their own recordings of the videos. They haven't said if they will release video from after March 16th. NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa joins us and has been following this story. So tell us about the significance of this video. Jeez. Well, TEPCO's teleconference is the only remaining record of communication between workers at the plant and employees at the company headquarters. The video begins at around 6.30 p.m. on March 11th. It goes on to record critical conversations that reflect how decisions were made and how the situation changed from time to time. Now, the accident happened more than a year and a half ago. Why did it take TEPCO officials so long to release this video? Basically, they didn't want to release them. Mm -hmm. They hadn't disclosed the videos even existed. We found out about the recordings in March through the course of an investigation into the accident by a diet appointed panel. NHK and other media repeatedly made requests for access to the videos, but TEPCO officials have refused until now. They said the videos are internal records and they cited concern about the privacy of their employees. They finally re agreed to re release the recordings from the five days from March 11th. They edited the image to prevent individuals from being identified. How are people reacting to TEPCO's reluctance to release these videos related to the disaster? Experts say all records should be under public control, even if access is limited. The Tatsuya Yoshioka is the head of a Japanese NGO calling for the abolition of nuclear plants. Here's what he had to say. This is the kind of very important historical the document, the record. I hope the TEPCO themselves to decide to open up more and more and more, as much as possible, transparency. And at the same time, that I would like to ask to the Japanese government that to make a pressure to them to release all the information. The TEPCO shareholders uh, suing the company's executives filed a petition for the videos to be preserved as evidence. They fear, they fear that the utility may erase the, the recording. The proving to the causes of the accident is not finished. These videos will surely be needed for the investigation. The government should take action to preserve all records related to the of the, this incident in the public archive. All right. The divide among Japanese lawmakers over the country's nuclear policy is delaying parliamentary hearings on the investigation report on the Fukushima accident. The Diet-appointed panel of experts last month submitted the report to both chambers of parliament. In the report, the panel criticized both regulators and the plant operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, for failing to take steps to prevent the disaster. It called the accident an obviously man-made disaster. Some opposition parties have called for testimony by panel chair Kiyoshi Kurokawa. He's a former chairman of the Science Council of Japan. 
An appeal was also made at a recent meeting attended by heads of both cham chambers of the Diet and members of the expert panel. Participants proposed that a standing committee be established in the Diet promptly to discuss nuclear issues based on proposals made in the panel's report. But hearings are unlikely to be held any time soon. Political parties are at odds over more immediate nuclear issues, such as whether to resume nuclear power generation. Most of Japan's reactors are now offline. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda is gearing up for a fight to stay in power. Seven opposition parties are joining forces to submit a no-confidence motion against him. They're trying to block passage of a bill to raise the consumption tax. Your party, Communist and Socialist Democratic, uh, Social Democratic Party leaders met Friday and invited four other parties to co-sponsor the no-confidence motion. They intend to submit it before the upper house takes a vote on the consumption tax bill. Noda's ruling Democratic Party pushed the legislation through the lower house late last month. Political heavyweight Ichiro Ozawa left the DPJ to protest against the bill and formed his own party. Prime Minister Noda has staked his career on raising the consumption tax. He's vowing to stand his ground. If the motion is submitted, we will do our best to defeat it. Analysts say it will be difficult to pass a no-confidence motion without the backing of the two main opposition parties. The Liberal Democratic Party and New Komeito have so far cooperated with the Prime Minister and his party, but they're threatening to change their stance if the government doesn't hold that consumption tax bill vote next week. A grandson of former U.S. President Harry Truman has met a survivor of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. Truman authorized the use of atomic bombs on that city and Nagasaki in 1945. Daniel will attend the peace memorial ceremony in Hiroshima on Monday. August 6th is a day people in Hiroshima will never forget. In 1945, the U.S. bomber Enola Gay dropped an atomic bomb on their city. People stopped again on the 67th anniversary to remember. The mayor recounted the stories of survivors, and he reminded people about the dangers of nuclear power. Matsui asked the Japanese government to reconsider nuclear power after the crisis at Fukushima Daiichi. I call on the Japanese government to establish without delay an energy policy that guards the safety and the security of its people. Last month, Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda decided to restart the plant in central Japan. He told the crowd the country would reduce its dependence on nuclear energy in the long term. And he said people across Japan bear the responsibility of sharing the story of Hiroshima. The government, for its part, will continue to appeal for the importance of a world without nuclear weapons. And it will continue to support, in many ways, the activities to hand down the memories of survivors across national borders in generations. Survivors are dying one by one, and many of their stories are dying with them. The UN High Representative for Disarmament Affairs says the use of nuclear weapons is increasingly seen as a violation of human rights. One of the most pressing issues still unresolved after last year's tsunami in Japan is what to do about the tons of debris washed into the ocean. A Japanese survey team has left for the United States where it hopes to come up with ideas to deal with the flotsam now washing up on the west coast of North America. The nine-member team includes experts and volunteers from the Tokyo-based Japan Environmental Action Network and Environment Ministry staff. During their three-day stay in the state of Oregon, they will visit coastal areas where debris has drifted ashore. They will meet U.S. non-governmental groups to learn what is needed in the cleanup effort. About 1.5 million tons of wreckage is believed to have been washed into the Pacific after the March 11th disaster. We want to use this occasion to share experiences and ideas with the residents living along the coast. We will then decide what is needed before moving on with actual measures. U.S. and Canadian officials are now trying to get rid of debris that is increasingly showing up on beaches. Countries from which such debris is generated are not required by international law to remove the flotsam. 
However, the Japanese government decided to send the mission because of the assistance offered by the United States and other countries after the tsunami. Following the accident in Fukushima, many people in Japan have come to rethink the country's dependence on nuclear power. The government proposed three options to decide energy dependency by 2030 from 0 percent, 15 percent, and 20 to 25 percent. The Japanese government held public hearings across the country to solicit views on these three options to decide future energy policy. Government officials heard from people in 11 locations across the country, and they often heard the same thing. 70 percent of participants are backing the zero percent option for Japan's new energy policy. That means utilities would stop producing nuclear power by 2030. The accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant was an eye-opener for many people in Japan. The meltdowns, explosions, and radiation leaks shook a long-held faith in atomic energy. Tens of thousands of people still can't return to their homes near the facility. And crews are still trying to control the plant and prepare it for the multi-billion dollar decommissioning process. But we feel the government has been failing to provide appropriate information. Distrust of its activities is growing. Skepticism is growing too. People wonder how the government will reflect public opinion and the new energy policy. One official admits it will be challenging. It's difficult to see which kind of opinion is more important, opinions expressed at the hearings or results of opinion polls. The Japanese government planned to decide on the energy policy by the end of this month. 
but would support growing for the 0% nuclear power option. It is considering postponing that deadline.